Look, it turns out Vaporeon with Shell Smash is an absolute monster. How? I'm glad you asked. We start with Cloyster, trained to be as slow and bulky as possible. This allows us to take an attack and then start smashing some shells. The defense stat drops then activates our eject pack, which allows us to immediately switch into Vaporeon. We can then pull out Copycat, which uses the last move that happened. This allows us to shell smash, effectively doubling our special attack and speed. The white herb item now negates the stat drops that come with it, and all of a sudden Vaporeon is an insane offensive threat while also keeping its natural bulk. We can now outrun and destroy stuff with Surf and Ice Beam, and Vaporeon can also take advantage of Stored Power, which is a 20 power psychic move that gets plus 20 for each stat boost. Since we Shell Smashed, Stored Power is now 140 power that we can boost even further with Ndidi's Psychic Terrain, along with Terra Psychic. Vaporeon is always known to be pretty passive, and its playstyle is boring, so I had to bust out the insane sweeper set and uh, make it fun. Alright look, sometimes you gotta come out with some crazy nonsense, and it can actually work. I realized today Vaporeon needs to be a sweeper for some reason, and we found a way, boys. I'm personally a big fan of coming up with extremely weird ways to make Pokemon do stuff that they probably shouldn't, and if you're into that kind of thing as well, you should go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you be part of the journey. Now without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. Alright, so my opponent's actually gonna go ahead and lead off with the Spiritomb. Didn't really expect the ghostly boy attached to the rock to be out here, but I decided to lead off with the Infernape, and this Infernape is kinda just here to set up some stealth rock, potentially be a fast U-turner, but also be a little bit of a wall breaker with overheat and close combat. So, they actually end up going for the Shadow Sneak turn one, and with that priority, able to go first and actually do over half, to where I'm looking at this thing thinking, what the hell kind of Spiritomb is it? It, clear it has to be Choice Band, just based off of that damage. So, with that knowledge, I can actually freely switch into the Ndidi. So, I'm rocking with Ndidi Mail on this team just for a little bit of extra support with the Psychic Surge. I'm able to set up the Psychic Terrain. That is going to block priority, and even if this thing wanted to Shadow Sneak my normal ass, they couldn't. So, they actually end up switching out here, and they're actually going to end up bringing in the Milotic. So, this Ndidi's role on the team is to kind of help power up the potential for the stored power on the Vaporeon, Block priority moves once we do get the Vaporeon moving fast. And also, this thing is here to do some pretty damn good damage. Expanding Force on that Psychic Terrain is able to hit extremely hard. We are throwing ass and Expanding Forces out here. And that's able to do over half to the Milotic. This is a mod in particular that I do want to try to get some chip on. Because I know that, uh, especially with that Flame Orb, this thing's going to be defensive with that uh, Marvel Scale ability. So while I can take Scalds all day long from this Milotic and Expanding Force does look nice, of course they do have the Spiritomb around, and they decide to switch this thing in, being Dark-type, obviously not affected by that. But honestly, Old Croissant Ears over here is going to go for the Healing Wish. This thing's role is also to kind of get out of there as quick as possible. And Healing Wish, while it does take myself out, it's one of the ways that I'm able to grab some Switch Initiative. So. There's some interesting quirks about the situation. So ordinarily, I would love to try to go into the Cloister against the Spiritomb. However, Cloister does need to be slower than whatever is across from us. Just basically because Shell Smash needs to activate last, so that way Copycat uh, is able to copy the Shell Smash being the last move used. So instead, I actually decided to go into the Infernape. It does benefit from the Healing Wish there. And also, I kind of uh, I do threaten the Spirit Team a little bit in terms of just getting some damage as the thing cannot go for Shadow Sneaks and you can't really do too much. So I decided to go for the Overheat as they're just going to go right back into the Milotic. Luckily, however, this thing is just taking some Burn Chip and is not looking like a super healthy serpent over there. I also realized this might be just the perfect mon for me to try to get my setup working against. So, I decided to go for the U-turn, and it's actually a little bit risky because it does put it into range to where in two turns the burn's gonna take care of it, and I really wanna try to use this as my setup. So, I decided to U-turn right into the Cloister, just because I feel like there's a good chance there's a recover incoming, and it actually does happen. They go for that recover, make this thing nice and healthy, but honestly, that is perfect. So this Cloister is very specific in that it has a minimum speed IV with no investment in speed. I want to try to be slower, and my low tick, even if it doesn't have any investment, should be faster than me, allowing uh, for them to hit me first, and then I go for the Shell Smash. So instead, they actually end up switching into Lucario, which uh, is a bit unfortunate, but he is a short king over there, by the way, looking about four inches tall. But I'm able to go for that Shell Smash regardless, and it is time to confuse the hell out of this guy. So, 
First of all, I get all the stat boosts that come with the Shell Smash, of course, but instead of activating what normally would be a white herb in this situation, negating the uh, stat drops, I instead activate the Eject Pack. And now I'm free to go into Vaporeon versus the Lucario. It's kind of a weird spot, right? Because Vaporeon, while I am max speed, I'm not naturally faster than Lucario here, but I do imagine they probably don't want to leave this thing in against Vaporeon. So it actually ends up working perfectly. They have no idea probably what's happening here. And they're going to instead make the safe switch into the Gastrodon. Of course, with Storm Drain, I cannot go for any water moves, and I can't really hurt this thing. But Vaporeon has different ideas, baby. I can then go for the Copycat, and then since the Shell Smash was the last move activated, I'm able to now smash my non-existent Vaporeon as Shell. So I now get plus two to attack, special attack, and speed. And of course, I do get the uh, minus to the defensive stats. However, I actually do have that white herb, which is going to allow me to now stay pretty defensive. Naturally, you know, Vaporeon works well for this strategy because of the fact that I am pretty bulky anyway. So I now am fully set up here. I have one turn left of the Psychic Terrain, which is important to note because while I wouldn't have much to hit this Gastrodon with if I was just an ordinary Vaporeon, I am in fact not your everyday Vaporeon. I'm actually going to go ahead and bust out the Terra Psychic. What that's going to do is add a nice little Terra stat boost to my stored power, which is already looking pretty damn powerful with all the stat boosts I currently have. So I bust out the stored power. Not only that, but I'm also on Psychic Terrain for one more turn, which does give us enough damage to knock out a Gastrodon that was more than likely just max specially defensive. And that is going to absolutely delete that thing. And Unfortunately, the Psychic Terrain does go away here, and what that's going to do is now allow priority moves, but also I no longer get the boost from it. But honestly, Vaporeon's pretty set up here, as they go back into Lucario. After a Shell Smash, however, I am timid, max speed. I am able to outspeed Lucario, and a stored power is just insane damage. And even if that thing was Focus Sash, it uh, did have to touch the Stealth Rock. So that boy is absolutely dead as hell. And there is one downside to having to commit the Terra Psychic, and that is because this Ghostly Asshole right here. So we saw earlier, this thing is definitely going to be a Choice Banded Shadow Sneak set, and now that the Psychic Terrain is no longer there, they are free to go for priority, which is quite scary. What's even scarier is that they actually are going to bust out the Terra Ghost, and that is going to give even more damage to their Choice Band a shadow sneak here. So with that Terra Ghost, this thing is looking extra ghostly. They do, of course, go first. It does not matter how damn fast I am. But listen to me very closely. Vaporeon is the defensive goat. Even a super effective Terra boosted banded Regan Shadow Sneak were able to live. And then I can fire off the Surf to take care of the Spiritomb. And uh, that actually could not have gone even any better. So <laughs> Vaporeon is literally insane. And surely at this point, they have literally nothing on their team that can take any attack from Vaporeon after a Shell Smash. And as they bring in Coma O, it's going to get absolutely obliterated by a stored power. So they just decide, I'm going to get the hell out of here. And they have seen the devil that lives <laughs> inside Vaporeon today. You may be thinking to yourself, man, it seems like Cloyster could just take advantage of the Shell Smash himself. But what would be the fun in that is what I would say to you. Anyway, next up, I have another battle because this is honestly a hilariously fun strategy. And honestly, the element of surprise makes it pretty doable in that literally nobody's going to expect to see this coming. So looking at the matchup here, they have an interesting team, definitely some pretty big threats over there. And let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so this time old Speed Racer over here is going to end up leading off with the Metagross. And I'm going to toss out the lead Infernape. So in this situation, I imagine... Hey, Stealth Rock is useful for me, and also they could potentially switch into a check to Infernape if they don't want to take an overheat. But also, I am definitely in danger of a Psychic Attack. As I set up my Stealth Rock, they are in fact just going to go right for that Zen Headbutt, and that just destroys me. So Infernape comes in, lays down some rocks, and says, I'm out of here. And that is unfortunate. However, honestly, as I'm looking at the Metagross here, this is kind of a perfect situation, because... While I go into the Cloyster here, I am going to be slower with my zero speed. And I know that uh, with that zero speed, I actually have extra HP investment, which does allow me to take pretty much any attack that that wants to throw at me. However, they actually end up switching. They're going to go into the Dawn Fan here. And luckily, old Donathan is going to be, in fact, clueless to what the hell is going to be going on here. So I am able to go for that Shell Smash. Now, as long as they went into something that is slower than Vaporeon, we are perfectly set up here. So I go ahead and bust the old shell open. Cloyster is kind of like 
Man, it's kind of rough being the guy that has to just bust his shell and then just be used as a copycat fodder. But someone's got to do the job and I'm paying him well. So that activates the eject pack, of course, and now it is time to go right into Vaporeon. So Vaporeon, of course, has a good matchup against the Don Fan. And while I come in here freely, I'm able to now go for the copycat where uh, this thing can hit me with any attack. I know I can live in Earthquake easily, uh, but more importantly, we are going to be able to copycat that Shell Smash. And I think it's still just hilarious watching Vaporeon pull a shell out of thin air and then smash it and then get just insane stat boost. So, of course, we get that attack, a special attack, and a nice little speed boost. All going to be doubled, and we are looking like our collar is popped, ready to go crazy. Also, White Herb now negates that defensive drop. They do go for the Rapid Spin to get rid of the Stealth Rock. And it actually ends up getting a critical hit, which is kind of annoying because I didn't need to take that much damage. But at this point, I am now going to be faster than everything they have. And this time, I'm actually working with Scald on this thing. I've been kind of messing around with some different Vaporeon options. Uh, Scald is, of course, nice. It's just 10 less power than Surf. So while that is able to easily take care of the Don Fan, now they can go back into the Metagross. So Metagross is in a situation here where I know that they can hit me with some neutral damage with that Zen Headbutt. Uh, but also, a plus two Scald is going to do a whole bunch of damage. Nearly takes the thing out. But we actually end up getting the burn, and that is exactly why uh, we run Scald in, in this situation at least. And it now allows me to take that Zen Headbutt. However, if I just had Surf with that extra 10 power, it probably would have just been better in general. But it's still fun to see the Scald burn uh, pay off. So I am still now able to outspeed, go for that last Scald, and it does finish off the freaking Xbox. So that's actually two pretty big Pokemon out of the way, and uh, Vaporeon's feeling good. However, now they're able to go into Greninja, and this thing is in a very unique situation against this Vaporeon specifically, just because I cannot stored power it and it resists Scald. So all I can do is just go for the Scald here. Sadly, it is not quite going to be able to take care of it, but I do get another burn, not that it's going to really matter, because uh, it does actually have the coverage with the Grass Knot, and sadly I've taken too much damage at this point, even though we're not very heavy. That does take care of the Vaporeon. So that's going to stop the, the Vaporeon sweep in its tracks. Which goes to show you, it's not going to work fully every time. And honestly, this, this battle is a pretty good example of that. And it's also a pretty good example of now I have to try to somehow pull this around with uh, having this team that's kind of just based around that and see what I can do. So it is still going to be a bit of, bit of work here, but I feel like I can do it. So the best option I have to go into is going to be the Zapdos. And while they do have the coverage with the Ice Beam, I know I can take it easily, and then a Heat Wave is going to take care of it because it is Grass-type at this point. So, Greninja being gone is great. That's a fast threat out of the way. That honestly pretty much hurts everything I've got. So, Zapdos being at around half is still pretty fine. So, now they get the Revenge Switch, and this thing is extremely scary. They do still have the Latios. They also got rid of the Stealth Rock, which is unfortunate. And now, I surely just am going to go down to a Luster Purge here. Or at least you would think, but Zapdos is about clutch as hell. I'm literally, I literally live on one HP somehow. I have no idea. It allows me to fire off a nice little little thunder wave there, which is, it was just kind of like clicked it. I imagined I was gonna die, but sometimes the one HP <laughs> just comes in about clutch as hell. So now I'm actually gonna be faster than the Latios, and I'm like, well, I could try to get Cloyster to actually set up and just pull the old Uno reverse and then be like, I am the Shell Smasher now, but. I'm just going to go for the Hurricane, I figure I can outspeed, it's worth it to roll for the damage, and I do actually connect, which is good because I get some solid chip, and even though I do go down, uh, it is going to open a door for a little revenge switch in here, and uh, it's honestly looking like Ambipom is kind of free to just go for a knockoff here, I figure I've gotten enough chip here to where a knockoff probably kills this thing. Uh, U-turn is potential if they want to switch, but I just decide anything losing their item is fine here. I kind of think maybe they switch into the Orthworm here. Um, but they're actually just going to stay in, Latios being paralyzed, going to have a bad time, and that does take care of it. So, Latios down, they now have two Pokemon left. Unfortunately for me, however, it's going to be two very defensive lads, and i got to try to work way around this. So, as Orthworm comes in, this is kind of the main thing I'm worried about here. I go for the, uh, the knockoff here just to try to get rid of whatever it has. Turns out it's going to be the Citrus Berry, and it actually does have the Body Press, which just straight up obliterates me. And... Honestly, getting rid of that Citrus Berry was pretty valuable, though, because that tells me this thing definitely wants to Shed Tail. And luckily, their final Mon being Umbreon is not going to benefit much from being behind the Substitute, and I just need to try to ensure that uh, I can take care of it. So, it's honestly looking like Indeed is kind of my best bet here, because even though this thing does resist both of my moves here, Expanding Force on that Psychic Terrain is going to do a whole lot. And 
I should be thick enough to take attacks from this thing as well, so I'm able to go for that expanding force, and I mainly want to go for it just to put it out of range of Shed Tail, which they do try to go for, and uh, that's, that's what Orthworms Orth Orth do. They do two things well. Look goofy as hell and go for Shed Tails. So <laughs> I am fine with that as at this point I go for the Dazzling Gleam. It's kind of just a middle ground play if they wanted to try to switch in the Umbreon for free. Uh, but also I know that I can take at least two attacks from the Orthworm as the Iron Head does do a nice little chunk. And I'm like, okay, they're just going to surely sack this thing and Expanding Force is going to take care of it. And down goes the Worm. So final Pokemon is going to be the Umbreon. And unfortunately, I am in fact a Mon that is weak to Dark at this point, and my only other option is my Cloyster that's not really going to do much here. So I decide I'm going to go for the Dazzling Gleam here, but they're actually just going to bust out the Terra. They got the, pulling out the late game Terra, and Umbreon a lot of the time is just going to go Fairy. It covers for that Fairy weakness, puts the heart on the head, and this thing is going to be able to take attacks all damn day long now. So I still don't really know exactly what type of Umbreon this is going to be, but I do know that it's going to be annoying. This thing is just surely the most annoying playstyle of all time. But they actually end up being Curse. Uh, so as they go for that, it's kind of a sigh of relief for me. Because this Ndidi is in fact equipped with uh, the best possible way to stop this in the form of Encore. This, this thing really is on the team to spill the grape juice and get the Psychic Terrain up there. But also, Encore and Healing Wish is just honestly such great support. Because I am of course fast as hell compared to this thing. I can go for that Encore, make it stuck into yeah, curses all day long and now I'm just free to just fire off some expanding forces since they went for that Terra versus the Dazzling Gleam it did you know defensively help them in that situation but now uh, expanding forces are gonna do neutral damage and I still have Psychic Train up long enough uh, to take advantage of that so Ndidi is looking about bitchy as hell over here and for good reason because while expanding forces aren't gonna do a whole lot of damage it does nearly half but um, it's going to be like a three hit KO at this point. They are just stuck in curses pretty much for the rest of this thing's life because as soon as the Encore wears off, I'm still faster. I can just literally go for it again and make this thing just stay cursing at me. The thing is quite the sailor mouth over here and it's going to, it's just going to have to be like that. So I just eventually am going to fire off two expanding forces. It is going to be able to finish this thing off to save you a little bit of time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the, the end of match two. But this one is such a fun strategy, I had to throw another one at you. So we know exactly what we need to do, we know how to execute, and since Vaporeon was stopped last time, I'm gonna see if we can get the full pop off. Let's get into it. All right, so this time, Homie's actually gonna end up leading off with the Tyranitar, and of course, as I have the kind of just dedicated lead mixtape, I'm feeling like, okay, surely this thing does not wanna deal with a close combat. You're absolutely allergic to these fists, and these things are rated E for everyone. But it turns out, however, they're actually going to stay and they're going to go ahead and commit the Terra. Turn 1, I'm thinking, uh-oh, this is not going to be ideal. They go for the Terra Fairy just to cover for that uh, close combat damage. But of course, I am just an, a monkey just minding my own monkey business over here as I just go for the Stealth Rock. The, the Stealth Rock is pretty nice for this strat just because I want to ensure that uh, Focus Sashes are broken. So, they actually end up going for the Thunder Wave turn 1. And now Infernape's like, well, that kind of sucks. I'm going to be slow now. But honestly, this thing's here just to set up Stealth Rock and just be annoying. So, with uh, the little bit of Sandstorm chip, it's always funny watching Tyranitar take the Sandstorm damage from its own freaking Sandstorm. I feel like this thing should just be immune to Sandstorm just in general. But, of course, it changes its type and it no longer is. So, I'm feeling like I can just go for an Overheat here after taking an attack. It turns out I'm actually faster. And that tells me that this Tyranitar has no speed investment. That means it's probably just a bulky one. We see the support with the, the Thunder Wave and even the Stealth Rock here. So as I'm able to get some nice little chip there with that Overheat, it doesn't do as much as I would imagine. And yeah, this thing definitely has some type of bulk and which is good to know because it's not gonna be a, a speedy boy. I was mainly just worried about honestly, a, uh, like a Dragon Dance in this situation, but uh, it's just gonna be, it's just gonna be here to help out, which is fine by me. So. Uh, I saw that I was faster even being paralyzed. I'm going to now just go for the U-turn. It's funny that Infernape being paralyzed with max speed is still just marginally, just a little bit faster than Tyranitar without any investment. But I can now go for the U-turn. And here's the thing. I can't really go directly into the Cloister here just because I can't afford to take uh, any extra damage. So instead, I decide to go into the Ndidi. And honestly, Croissant fits really well in this, in going into this thing first anyway, just getting that Psychic Terrain up as it definitely, it helps out enable Vaporeon, 
and just in general, just, he, he helps out. So I spill the grape juice around. They actually end up missing the stone edge there, which is unfortunate, except uh, while Indeedy is in danger of, you know, a, a freaking dark attack at this point, I kind of want Indeedy to go down because I've got my terrain up. Uh, I go for the expanding force here, kind of thinking maybe this kills. It actually ends up living, and now they're able to go for the knockoff. That does, in fact, end up knocking me out, and now we got an, a freaking terrain extender just laying on the floor. So, I feel like I'm actually set up pretty nicely here in this situation because knowing kind of what speed exactly this Tyranitar is working with, I'm thinking after leftover recovery, it looks like it's going to take another Sandstorm chip, like maybe, and this might be the dude to try to get the Cloister in on because... While we know that this thing doesn't have any speed investment, and Cloyster is just a little bit faster naturally, I am zero speed IV, and that actually puts me just slower than this thing, which is perfect. I also know, with the HP investment I have, I should be able to take an adamant max attack Stone Edge, which is honestly kind of insane. I take it perfectly, and now that allows me to fire off the Shell Smash, and we are absolutely rolling. It does seem kind of crazy that I live literally a stab, max attack, adamant stone edge, but then you realize Cloyster has base 180 defense, so it's kind of perfect for this situation. And now, of course, I activate that eject pack, and I imagine they're always sitting over there like, the hell just happened? He shell smashed, and then, like, they see the item activate, just my brain just goes automatically to the white herb, and then they're like, oh, and it's gone. So that's going to bring me into the Vaporeon, and luckily, Vaporeon, collar popped, is, of course, going to be faster than the Tyranitar, and also, this thing is still alive over there as a sitting duck and the perfect opportunity for me to now go for that copycat, which is exactly what's going to happen. And what I am mainly worried about in this situation, while Vaporeon's having a grand old time, just getting the stats exactly where we need him to be, he is in fact not Irish, but his stats are Dublin. But I, I'm worried about this thing going for the Thunder Wave. I know that we've seen that, and if they Thunder Wave, that could stop Vaporeon from doing what we needed to do. So... I go ahead and get all of my boosts, bring my defenses back to normal with the White Herb, and I they do go for the Thunder Wave. I was really hoping for a, a Stone Edge, knowing that I could take one, but they do paralyze me. And now, with my speed cut in half, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for the boy to, you know, do what we need it to do. But at least in the situation, of course, we do outspeed the Tyranitar, and, and I'm not too mad at it, because at full health... Vaporeon is still pretty damn bulky, just naturally. So I'm able to go for the Surf, Cowabunga bitch. I do take care of the Tyranitar, so that thing goes down. And now we get to see whatever their answer is going to be for this thing. So they don't have like a stab, like electric or a grass. So I'm thinking I should be able to take an attack even if I'm slower. As they're actually going to end up going into the uh, Miss Maggie here. So Old Mustard comes in at this point, and... Surely they probably have the Thunderbolt here. I'm considering going for the Terra, but being paralyzed, I almost don't want to do it. Um, they do bust out the Thunderbolt, and this is where Vaporeon's Bolt comes in clutch. I'm able to barely hang on, and I do not get fully paralyzed. That allows me to then fire off the Stored Power on the Psychic Terrain. Easily takes care of the Ghost, and we are cruising a little bit here. However... We are still not as fast as we would like to be being paralyzed. And at this point, they decide to go into the Dragonite. And I'm like, oh shit, they're going to do it. I, they're totally going to do it. They're going to click extreme speed. And they do. They <laughs> click extreme speed on the psychic terrain. I am, in fact, protected. And I do break through the para, fire off the ice beam. And homeboy is not going to have any of that. Because they just say, <laughs> up, turn off the switch. Which is the funniest thing ever. And they forgot about how psychic terrain works. And that's exactly why we have it on the team. To be fair, I have done my fair share of forgetting that the terrains are active, and I thought that was just the funniest possible way to end the video, <laughs> and let me know if you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you did, and I will be back with some more shenanigans soon.